This video is going to be the installation of a three axis digital readout on this um, Charter Oak uh, automation bed mill. This is similar to an RF45. Uh, you probably have seen a lot of videos on these. This is probably the most uh, common hobbyist milling machine where someone didn't want to drop the coin on say a, a 9 by 42 bridge port or they don't have the space for one. Uh, this takes up a little less space than a bridge port does but it offers very good travel. Um, this one has about 16 inches or so on the Z. The X is, let's see I've got the paperwork here. The X travel is 585 millimeters or 23 inches and the Y travel is 205 millimeters or eight uh, eight inches it's just about eight inches so um, pretty good travel for the size of machine it is I built this stand uh, funny story I actually had it on casters some really heavy-duty casters and I was thinking you know what it'd be kind of nice to have this machine on casters um, and I you know I had the locking versions um, and all that but it turns out casters on a milling machine suck and they're not a good idea so don't do it so you're on the back side of this now I'm mounting the X scale and I've basically located this on here um, I guess the the big thing is you want to have your scale centered on your table long story short make sure you leave enough height for this because you would not want to have this uh, you would not want this to be above your your table because then if you have something that's going to extend past here you can't have it flat well now i'm going to be doing some more drilling and tapping into this cast iron it's not as thick as you'd think it would be Trust me, China doesn't want to make anything thicker than they have to. They're pretty good at meeting the bare minimum on all specifications. Um, okay, I've got two of these started. Now I'm going to go ahead and drill and tap these. So you'll see I use a step drilling procedure. Step drilling basically means you start with a small size and work your way up to the desired size, slowly. It's not necessary to even use oil with this. So if this seems like it's drilling really easy, that's because I'm step drilling and that makes it really nice so now I've just got to grab a tap really quick now I do put a little dab of oil on my tap before I use that that's good practice and taps can last a very long time if you take care of them so here's what I use for lubricant uh, I bought these on Amazon they're a paint cup they're like an anti-spill paint cup for maybe like kids or something and they work very well you can take an acid brush like this and put your oil in the bottom of there and then if it gets knocked over or something it won't spill so I don't fill these up very high and they last a long time between fills and then I set the clutch on here you can set it to whatever you want between like on this drill, 10 to 14 is usually pretty good for this size. Um, but this is a five millimeter, uh, five millimeter tap. All right, there's two drilled and tapped holes. Well, now I'm getting the Y axis set up. And what I've done was mount the, because it's kind of like a, a rail for this. And you'll see I've got two Noga indicators, or the indicators aren't Nogas, but I'm using the magnetic Noga uh, indicator 
base. These allow you to have five axis movement and they're very nice for this. So what I did was I zeroed one on the uh, one like axis coming in and out and then I have one on top measuring um, any changes on the height. So using those two, uh, if you have two of those, man, that makes indicating very easy. They're very flexible. Now that I've got the mount <laughs> mounted, uh, and I put the scale on there, and these are nice because you still have some adjustment here, so you can adjust up and down, and then you can also still shim between this and the base plate that you've mounted. So I think that's a pretty nice technique. Um, you can get it really close and then dial it in perfectly with this. Now what I've got going on is I've cranked the table to the extreme of the y-axis travel towards the uh, column there. And I'll leave, I don't know, about a half inch gap or so. And then I'm going to get this scale mounted. I don't know how I'm gonna do it yet, but more than likely, let me back up here. More than likely, to get this thing attached to this somehow, I'm going to be drilling and tapping into this face either here or the other side. Okay, I think I've got the orientation and setup that I want now. So, you see that red line? Dang, it's hard to do this with one hand. <laughs> anyway, right below my thumb, you'll see a red line. That's from the Sharpie marker. It's just a quick indicator of where I think I want the positioning of this to be. You might be curious on how I plan on locating the hole um, to drill and tap. This is what I do. I've got a piece of, I think this is 5 sixteenths. It's either 5 sixteenths or 3 eighths drill rod, just high speed steel. And I put this on my cordless drill and I brought it over to my grinder and I spun it at, you know, high RPM and just created a point. It's not focusing well. Let me try to get that focused. Hmm. Actually, there's the drill I used. So I just put that in there. I'd like to show you the tip of this thing. I've been using this for, I don't know, about a year now. And I've never had to sharpen it. It's hard to get that bastard to focus. Anyway, it's sharp and it's remained sharp. Um, especially just tapping cast. Um, just doing a little punch in that. It doesn't really dull these. So you can use what you wanted if you have a crappy screwdriver. You might be able to sharpen the tip of that. Um, then you simply... I just eyeball the hole I want in this case works great and then uh, hit it with a little hammer on the back side and it's got an indent so there is my indent there I've got a little one here and then you can hit it a few more times a little harder if you wish um, remember that cast is fairly brittle so I wouldn't go whacking it too hard and that's it. I'll drill that and tap it. Alrighty, so I've got that hole drilled and tapped now. Put this guy into position. I've got one of the fasteners here, lock washer and a normal washer. Let's see if this thing lines up. And I'm probably only going to use one fastener on this. I don't think there's a need to have another, otherwise I would do it. But if this is ever in the circumstance where it needs more strength than this, I've got issues because this thing should be installed to where it moves freely without resistance. Okay. You just want everything snug. I wouldn't overdo it on anything on here. All right, so got that. Let's go ahead and move this guy. There we go. Well, it's moving. That's good. It's half the battle. The 
third video it <laughs> no the second video uh, I'm gonna break this into two parts the X and Y axis or axes are going to be on the first video part one and the uh, second video is going to be on doing the Z mount just because I want to keep this relatively short and if you are actually following this and trying to do it yourself um, it's going to take a little time for you to get to this point uh, this one I'm all out of brackets so I'm going to use that piece of angle aluminum there it's uh, I think an inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter by three sixteenths thick um, 60 61 aluminum and this is where I'm going to utilize that. So this bracket, since I'm out of other brackets, I'm gonna have to mount this and then have the other piece of angle mounted to there, which I'll show you in the next video. Um, I did mount this damn, uh, this mount here that holds the digital readout too close to the front of the column. I'm gonna have to relocate that thing just to give you a heads up. I messed up, I just centered it on there earlier because I was gonna mount this scale on the opposite side, but the crank for whoops the uh, the crank handle to raise and lower the um, spindle is on that side, so that's not a good side to mount it. And uh, I wasn't thinking about that, and so I've screwed up here. It's not a big deal at all. Uh, I don't really mind, but I wanted you guys to know so you don't make the same mistake. And uh, it does make me look like an amateur, but that's because I am, and uh, we make mistakes. Um, then we can learn from them and not mess it up on the next go round hopefully. So anyway, hopefully you're liking the video so far. I know I sound like an idiot. I'm aware of that. Um, you don't even need to mention it in the comments below. If you do, that's fine too. Um, but I do want to share what this experience is like so people can knock this out on their own machine without, you know, having someone else do it. And this is a very good, um, installation because it's going to make you grow as a fabricator or machinist or hobbyist, whatever you want to call yourself and it's challenging and rewarding all right i've got the tripod now so you guys don't have to experience such a crappy video um so i'm going to try to show you this again hopefully you don't just see my fat head in the way um this is the the scale with the reader on it and this 90 degree bracket i've just cut this um bracket to size and I've uh, got that to the same three and three eighths that this is, just for symmetrical reasons. Um, I've mentioned that I have to relocate this further that direction towards the back of the machine because this is actually going to conflict with that when it travels. So I've kind of screwed the pooch on that one. So I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So as this comes down, that's going to contact it. So I'm simply going to use the same holes that I have tapped and just relocate it backwards and it will give it plenty of clearance. I'm going up to the actual required hole dimension. Now I've got my tap drill. One hole done. Two holes done. Okay, so we've got both holes drilled and tapped now. Trying to get a fastener here to just test the threads here. Nice and smooth. So cordless drills for small size holes like this, I would say I'll up to like 5 sixteenths, maybe 3 eighths of an inch. They're awesome. They save you a lot of time. So that's done. One step closer to victory here. Okay, I've got the, the Z uh, mounted. So here is what I did there. And... Let me set the camera up really quick. There we 
go. So now we see we have the the X, Y, and Z all working. Not bad. Total installation, and it's not finished yet, but we are working everything. I could use it as is. Uh, total installation time so far has probably been about three hours. But I have done this on two other milling machines prior. One on a jet uh, knee mill and on a 9x42 bridge port knee mill. So this one is actually easier to mount to than a bridge port because the column is nice and relatively straight. What I did to space this out was I used a couple of these washers, one on the bottom, one on the top, because I had a, a bow here in the middle, and so that solved that. I'm gonna do something about cable management. I'll probably do an updated video later. But for now, that's how I uh, threw this thing on this uh, Charter Oak automation. This is similar to RF45 uh, bed mill.